So only about 1% of NADN users know how to use this code tool inside NADN. And it's kind of a shame because it's like a cheat code inside NADN that unlocks the door to building literally anything else that you want that previously would not be possible inside NADN using any of these tools over here. Now we're gonna be breaking this down so that even if you do not know a single line of code, you're still gonna be able to master this in this video. Let's break down why this matters. Then we're gonna give a couple case studies on how you can go about using this code node in your day-to-day -day life. And then we're going to be talking about how at the end of the video, you can deploy this in a matter of just a couple of minutes and start building out infinitely complex scenarios very quickly and very easily. Now with the code tool over here, it effectively replaces everything on the right side here. So before you have all these tools and then afterwards you just have this code node. Now I'm not saying that you should go ahead and give up all of these different tools because Personally, I would use them before the code node, but the thing is, is that all of these tools, they're great until they just don't work or they don't provide you with the functionality that you're looking for. And trust me when I say pretty much all of these tools will have their limitations that you cannot bypass. And when you encounter that point, it's gonna be really nice to know how to use the code tool because this is gonna bypass any limitations you're experiencing with NADN. And so what you can do with flow over here or data transformation, you can pretty much always do with the code tool as well because these are just JavaScript functions or coding functions at the end of the day, which you could build it out by yourself. And again, you do not need to know a single line of code. Let's go into a couple other reasons why this matters. First of all, these code nodes, they're very consistent. They almost always work and they never really break. There's no cost to them. They again, work every single time because they're very consistent. They're faster. They can process more data and all of that kind of good stuff. Now let's get into a couple examples here. Keep in mind, I can only go over a couple because there's literally an infinite amount of possibilities. Let's say you have emails coming in with PDF files. And maybe you want to extract these documents and you want to upload them into a Google Drive folder, or maybe you want to upload this into QuickBooks or something like that. Without a code tool, I literally do not know how you'd be able to do this by extracting multiple different documents simultaneously at the same time, because I've tried to do it with two or more PDF files and it just doesn't work inside NADN. But with the code tool, what you can do is automatically extract all of these documents and then automatically do whatever you want with them. Like, upload them into Google Drive. Now, the rest of the f examples here are gonna be using this Moxie RAM where we have clients coming into this particular spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this off and give a couple more examples here. The first thing that we can do with this spreadsheet is we can sort all of these leads and we can do that based on something like the price. Uh, that they have to uh, spend on our services. Now, before you'd use this sort node here, but it's very basic. And if you wanna get any additional functionality, you're gonna have to go to coding. And so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and built out a code step that sorts it based on the price. And we can sort this based on price high to low or low to high. But in this instance here, let's just go through. We have $300, $350, $450. So we're sorting it ascending from the lowest to the highest price. Another use case is to cluster or group information together. So let's say we have all of these stages here and we want to get some meaningful analytics on every single stage. Like for example, what's the total amount of money at every single stage? Or what's the median amount of money? Or what's the average amount of money? Well, using this code tool, what we can do is we can pull out all of this data from this Google spreadsheet, and then we can run a formula on it to see every single stage like contract sent, leads, paid, and uh, sales call and all that kind of stuff. And then we can see the total amount at that stage. We can see the average price. We can see the median price and we can also see the counts. We can get um, math functions on this. We can also group data together. Now, the next thing that we can do is restructure JSON data. So if we look at this code tool here, we'll see that the data is coming in. It's pretty smooth. We just have information per row here, B, A, B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth. Now, the problem is, is that if we're sending data to an external third party app, maybe that data needs to be formatted a particular way. So instead of it just being flat, where we have like, for instance, first name, last name, email, phone, price, stage, country, all that kind of stuff. Maybe what we need 
is the lead information here to be grouped in an object, an object you can think about it like an assortment of random information like a Google Drive folder, where we have things like stage and country and price, and it's grouped together inside this object here. Now, what we can do with the code tool is we can reformat this JSON data to structure it properly so that we do group things like the stage, country, and price together in that lead object over there. And so this is a huge game changer because if you're to do this previously, you need to use an editing tool node here. And if you've ever done this before, you know it's an absolute nightmare. There's nothing that I hate doing more than, uh, well, I can think of a couple of things I hate doing more, but that's one of the least enjoyable things. It's like pulling teeth inside NNN to get this formatted properly. You just wanna like smash your computer and, and break it and then regret every single decision you've ever made in your life. Next thing we can do is use, you create universal IDs. So let's say you want to create an invoice, you want to generate a unique ID, you can go ahead and do that very easily using the code note down here. And you can also go ahead and clean up text. So let's say you have a YouTube transcript here with all of the timestamps. Maybe you don't want those timestamps and just want clean text. We can run it through this code block here and then we can pull out all of the text very cleanly. Now this is really, really beneficial because if you were to use an AI agent to do this, would be way more expensive, be way less reliable. And the problem is, is that half the time it wouldn't work because you're just trying to send too much data and the context window wouldn't be large enough to grab all of that information that you're sending. Now, last thing that I wanna cover here is advanced filtering. Now, inside NADN, you have these simple filters where you can have multiple variables separated by an and or an or, but you can't have nested filters are very dynamic filters going on. So let me give you an example of a nested or dynamic filter. I'm gonna go back to my blackboard here where you could be like price needs to be over $1,000. That can be one condition. You can do that on a simple filter, but then you could do or, and now you have a second condition. So we're saying it either has to be A or it has to be B. But here's the real magic, because now you can have like more nested filters over here. And so you could have ands in the middle. So all of a sudden you could be like, maybe the country needs to equal, and I apologize for my writing. I don't think I ever graduated like elementary school with my writing, so <laughs> apologize for that. But country needs to be USA and the, um, the stage has to be lead. And I'm just giving like arbitrary things here right? The stage has to be lead. But the important thing is, is that we have different um, nest, we have a nested filter. This is A, this is B. And inside B, we have two conditions that need to be met because we have this and in here. So we can have and statements, and we can also have or statements all nested from within one code node over here, which is not possible with the simple filter they have available to you have available to you inside NADN. Now let's talk about how you can actually go about building this out because we've talked a lot about this, but let's put this into practice now. So I have another workflow here, which is referencing the same data in the past. And we're just gonna do one simple example where we're going to sort the data based on the price over here. And once you know how to do it one time, you're gonna be able to know how to do this like an infinite amount of times and apply it to whatever situation you want. Once you see it, it's very, very simple. Cool, so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna hit the plus button here and we're gonna enter in code, okay? We're gonna choose JavaScript because JavaScript and Python, they're two different languages in coding, but JavaScript is kind of like the, the backbone of the internet and it's what N810 is built off of. So all we have to do is select JavaScript here. Now, the only thing that you have to do with all this code is just highlight it all and hit that massive delete button. And then actually I didn't hit that properly, but you need to clear everything and then you're good. Sweet, that is it. Like that's the, that's the extent of everything you need to know about this code in here pretty much. Cool, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to ChatGPT and we're gonna type in natural language, the code that we want. So for instance, I'm gonna say, please create me code for an NADEN code uh, node where we sort data uh, based on the price from low to high, okay? And so that's all we need to do. I'm gonna hit a colon here and then a space. And the last thing we need to do is we just need to provide the data structure that it's working with. So all we're doing is just typing in natural language what it is that we're looking for. There's no code left. And we just need to grab all of this data. So inside the code block, this is the data we're referencing, okay? If 
for instance, in your example, maybe you're referencing other data, but whatever data you're referencing, you just need to go to that and then hit this copy button right here, copy section, okay? And then we're gonna paste it in there and that conveniently didn't work. So I'm gonna try this one more time. And I think there's like a, unfortunately, well, that was really under dramatic. Uh, I think there's a bug <laughs> inside N8N. We just gotta go back to the previous node here and then we'll go over to JSON and uh, we'll copy this. Oh my God, I'm, I'm mortified if this doesn't work. Okay, we're good to go. This, uh, this copied in all the code and now we can click enter. So all we're doing is just going to the previous node or whatever node we are collecting that information on. And we're just going to literally copy that in and then n8n is going to go to work for us and it's going to go ahead and create that code now all we have to do is just go ahead and click that copy code and come into the code node here and then oh, we got to delete it one more time and then paste it in that's it hopefully this works out of the box let's execute the step and find out Cool, so we have the price here. It looks like it's starting at 300, then it goes to 350. Then it's gonna go up to 650. Oops, I skipped one, 450, 650, 700. Awesome, so it is officially working. But let's take it a step further and say that you're not happy with the output. Maybe you want it to change because not all the time it's gonna be perfect, right? And so we're gonna have to account for errors and we're gonna have to account for changes and all that kind of stuff. And all we need to do is go back to ChatGPT and tell it how we want things to change. So I could say, actually, I want you to sort it from high to low, please. And then it will go ahead and change this, the, the code depending on what it is that you want. So we'll go ahead and copy this in, paste it one more time and execute it. And this time it should go from high to low. Let's take a look. 9,000, 6,000, 5,000, 4,200, and so on and so forth. And so let's just say, for instance, this just draws an error. I'm just gonna put an extra dot here and we're gonna execute the code and it's gonna draw an error here, okay? So what we can do in this case is I'm just gonna click other info here and I'm literally just going to highlight everything here and I'm gonna say, I got this error. Can you please help me fix it? And I'm gonna paste in the code here and I'm also gonna paste in uh, the working code here. So I'm gonna say working code or whatever. And then I'm gonna say error down here and reference that huge error that we got. Then it will go ahead and fix that code for us in case we ever encounter something like this. And you'll see that it literally spotted it right away. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just copy the new code in here and then paste it back in and it should work out of the box. And so anytime you're dealing with this code, Maybe on the first try, it doesn't work. Maybe there's an error and you just gotta go back to ChatGPT and ask it how to fix it. Or maybe, you know, you thought you wanted a certain way. It turns out once you saw the results, you wanna change it. You can always go back and work in natural language with the ChatGPT to make sure that you get the results that you're looking for. It's just a back and forth process. Now that you know how to do this one time, you can literally apply this to whatever type of scenario you're working with. And hopefully this can unlock that cheat code for you where you can just build the most complicated workflows imaginable without even knowing a single line of code and um, anytime you run into limitations with any of these existing codes over here which happens you know uh, quite often you can be able to bypass that by using ChatGPT in this code node over here really appreciate your time if you did like this video and you found value in it please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also take a look at my school community where there are three transformations that I want to give members here first of all is to teach you these skills in depth so you can apply it to your life to save time and earn money the second transformation transformation is for those of you who are looking to create an AI automation agency. I give you the exact blue, uh, roadmap and blueprints to be able to find, close, and fulfill deals within 30 days or less. And there's countless people in this community that are already achieving that. Let me just open up a couple testimonials over here so you can take a look for yourself. Uh, Mark got it in a couple weeks. Addy closed a $10,000 deal very shortly after joining the community. Joseph is now at 10K. Sophie hit her first $1,000. Uh, Drawer hit his first sale. Winnie Lee hit her first sale. Luca has been crushing at like 10 plus sales. Julian hit $30,000. And so there's a ton of people that are succeeding using this predefined roadmap. And then the third group of people are those of you looking to essentially automate your existing business. I give you the exact blueprints that allowed me to scale to seven figures, automate 80% of my business. And all you have to do is copy, paste, and deploy it into your business. And then you should be good to go. And ideally you can automate up to 80% of it in less than two months. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found value in this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.